Hey everyone, so today I want to go over Ring. And what Ring is, is a very low level closure library that's used to create web servers. And it's important to understand Ring because most, if not all, other closure frameworks are built on top of it. So to follow along, you will need some version of Java as closure runs in the JVM, so inside of the Java virtual machine. And for this project, I'll be using the closures command line. I actually need to start the REPL, so there we go. And I'll be using devs.eden, which is the dependency management and build tool for the closure CLI. So we'll need to make a new directory, as well as a devs.eden file. And I'll be using VS Code. If you're using Vim or Emacs, you can go right ahead and use that. As with all devs.eden projects, we're going to need to specify the source paths. And I'll just put all my files into source. For dependencies, we'll obviously need closure because this is a closure app. And how else would you run a closure app? But then the only two dependencies we'll need from Ring is Ring Core, which is all the underlying implementations of the web server. And then we'll also need Ring Jetty Adapter. And the Jetty Adapter is going to adapt all of our closure code to be compatible with the underlying Java Jetty server. We'll also need to create the source directory where all of our code lives. And then inside of that, we'll add the core.clj file. And just to make sure our configuration works, we're just going to create a main function that prints out hello world. Also do remember that the namespaces in Clojure are using the snake case, but the file director will need to be using underscore snake case because the underlying Java implementation doesn't understand hyphens, they only understand underscores. And lastly, we'll add a run alias and pass in the main options so that we could run this application in our command line. And in the terminal, we could run clj a for alias, where we use run, and this should print out hello world, which it does. Now, there's an extension called Calva that we'll be using. Now we can go back into the core, and we can start by importing run jetty. And using the Calva extension, we're going to start a REPL and connect to it, also known as jacking in. We'll just select that this is a Clojure CLI project, and we don't really need to pick any aliases. We'll use the default Calva connection, and Calva will give us good editor integration with the Clojure REPL. And one of the main benefits is going to be IntelliSense. So we can hover over Run Jetty. Um, we're not getting anything because we need to load the file. So we'll, so we'll tell Calva to load the current file and all of the dependencies. So it's kind of good that we got errors because I made a simple typo here. Instead of dependencies, this should actually be called depths. And after you fix that little typo, we can now jack in like normal. And once you're jacked in, you can load the file. I have key bindings for all of this, but you can find all of the commands by doing call the, and then whatever you want. I'll be sure to show anything that we haven't already covered. But if you load the file, you get the IntelliSense, and when you hover over, this will tell you what Run Jetty wants. And the two arguments that it wants is going to be the handler as well as the options. So first, it would be good to define a handler function. And this is going to take in an HTTP request and it's going to return a response. So we'll move our hello world from the print line to a response of hello world and the status of 200. And then in our main function, we could then pass in the handler to run Jetty. And in terms of options, we'll just run this on the local port of 3000. And while we could run the main function inside of our terminal, like we have before with the alias, you can actually leverage the power of our REPL integration by running it inside of our editor. Now Run Jetty is going to block the thread, so we will have to exit and re-enter our REPL again. And if you don't know what that means, it's basically that this is an asynchronous task that we can't exit out of unless we kill the process completely. But while the server is running, we could use something like Insomnia or a browser to go to localhost 3000. If we send a request, we'll get hello world back, which is what we expect. Now coming back after you disconnect from your REPL, which you can use from the command palette of Calva disconnect. We covered a little bit about handlers, but what I want to get into is middlewares and how that is the core of Ring. And the most important one that I want to use is actually going to be inside of the, the Ring development library. And I'll jack in again. Now in my personal workflow, I don't really like this web view. So I'm going to get rid of it. I mainly pay attention to the output in the bottom here and I evaluate everything in line. But what the development library gives us is the reload middleware and I'm going to import wrap reload from that. 
And we can wrap the handler function with wrap reload. But the way wrap reload works is that we need to pass this by reference instead of by value. So we'll pass the raw handler function definition inside so that whenever this changes, it'll update for us. And while we're inside of the main function, let's also add a print line so that when we run it somewhere else, we'll see that it actually started. And then make sure you load your file into your REPL. And then we can run this inline. And what's being returned is the underlying Java Jetty server. But what's important is inside of our output console, we have our little print line saying server started on port 3000. So we go into Insomnia and check if our handler has updated. And it says this totally changed, which is correct because it did. But if we change this back to hello world again and load the file back into our REPL, we do a send and we get hello world. And using the same logic, we can define whatever we want as our middleware as long as we take in a response and provide back a response. An example here is adding the content type of text plane to our response. And inside of our handler, we could just wrap our response with that. And now what comes back is going to be a full response with the content type. But say you want the content type to be somewhat dynamic and take in a second argument. This way, instead of text plane back over here, we change it to content type. And then we also have to make sure that we add the second parameter where we're calling our middleware. Of course, Ring already gives us a content type middleware that we could use, and it is called wrap content type. There are many others, including cookies and files, or something like uploading files or sending back files. But if we wrap our middleware with wrap content type, and then, which also means we have to add in text plane again, or if we want to do something fancy like application JSON, we can. But as you can see, this could get a little messy. So what is recommended is to use the thread first macro. And I'm just going to put a comment here so that it's a little easier to read without all the extra parens. But with the thread first macro, we'll take the intended response and we'll pass it in to each of the following functions as the first argument. So if we wanted to add another middleware, all we have to do is add it into our handler chain and each of these middlewares will take effect. There is a shortcut with functions that take in exactly one argument inside of a thread first, and that's just to get rid of the parens. So it'll look like that. But yeah, that's mainly the gist of ring inside of Clojure. The next step is to find a routing library as that's a bit out of scope for ring, and each web framework differs in how it handles its routing. But I hope you found this video valuable and that you enjoyed. And I'll see you all next time.